Since moving into the new workshop, my garage has felt a little neglected. And slowly but surely, more bikes, scooters, and toys have found their way in. Now, my plan is to continue to make projects and videos out of my garage, but with a more slightly DIY focus. So I wanted to make sure that I sort of got things under control before they get, well, out of control, I guess. So far, all I've been doing is breaking my panels for the box down into their finished dimensions. To do this, I just used a mix of my table saw, and for anything that was too big to cut safely over there, my circular saw. And here's a shot that shows the dimensions of everything so far. Next, I marked and cut a pair of slots into what's going to become the front panel of the box. And these are going to be where the front wheels of the bikes go when they get parked. After those were cut out, I transferred my marks onto the bottom panel and then cut another pair of slots there. And once that's done, this will clear out all of the material that we need to for the tires to be able to fit in. Next I assembled everything using a little bead of glue and some screws. And to act as an extra set of hand, these right angle corner clamps from Rockler and some Maker Brand Co. T-Bar clamps. Okay, this next part is probably the most challenging part of the build, but there's an easy and a harder way to do it. So let me show you both and then tell you what I did. So at the moment, we have a box with slots cut into it. Fine for parking bikes in, but not great for holding any toys. So the easy thing to do would be to cut four pieces to cover each slot. This will give a little cubby for where the tire goes and keep anything in the box separated. I also decided that I wanted to put some partitions in to just make the whole thing a little bit more rigid and organized. So that's the easy way. But let's scrap all that because I didn't do it that way. Instead, I decided I wanted to make it where the front tires would kind of wedge themselves in when you park the bikes. Now, either way will work, but this just makes them stand up a little bit straighter regardless of how wide the tire is. So in order to do this, each slot had to be surrounded by five pieces, like this. And I'm gonna go over this in more detail as we make all the cuts. I started by marking and cutting a few pieces to the same height as the tire slot. And I'll get all of my pieces from these boards so it'll all match up. Next, I cut them into oversized blanks, eight pieces in total, four for each slot. And I should also mention, since I didn't earlier, I'm building this whole project from one sheet of Baltic birch plywood and a bunch of leftover pieces from other projects. In any case, you'd need two sheets, but you'd have a ton left over. Next, I needed to cut a pair of bevels at what the scale on your table saw would read as 60 degrees, which is impossible. So instead, we're gonna set it to 30 degrees and then cut the piece vertically which will give us the same result. And this little tool that I'm using here is called a gauge block. And it's actually a one-time tool from Woodpeckers and it's only available till the 4th of February. So if that's something that you're interested in, I'll throw a link in the description. With the 60 degree bevels cut, next I set my blade to 15 degrees and made cuts on the opposite ends of the pieces that I had just cut as well as on one end of the other pieces that are going to make up this whole surround. And then finally, I set my blade back to 90 and cut those last untouched edges to their final dimensions. And here in this drawing, you can see how all those angles that we just cut are going to come together to make the shape that we're looking for. After my wedges were dry, I glued them into the box by attaching them to the bottom and front panels. Then I got another piece of scrap and traced out their shape so that I could make this little cap for the top. 
And I should mention, for all these pieces, you really don't have to be that neat. I'm probably being overly cautious here. You could leave everything oversized, or you could come back with a flush trim bit, or really just leave it because it's going to be buried by Nerf guns and kickballs anyway. Next I did a little pre-sanding and installed some casters. So while I'm doing that, let's take a second to thank Squarespace for sponsoring this video. I've been using Squarespace for almost two years now. I've recommended it to tons of people, both here and in my personal life, and I haven't heard one person complain yet. And I think the reason for that is because it's just drop dead simple and the outcomes look awesome. They have a variety of templates that are perfect for any kind of website you might be dreaming up, be it a personal portfolio, an online store, or something for a brick and mortar like a restaurant. And if you ever need assistance, they have great customer service, which I can personally vouch for. The bottom line is, whatever it is you're looking to do, they'll be there to help you do it. And best of all, right now you can start a free trial by visiting squarespace.com slash four eyes and save 10% off your first purchase when you use the offer code four eyes at checkout. So if you're thinking about starting a website, or even if you have an existing one, you owe it to yourself to at least give them a look. All right, thanks Squarespace. Next, I set my blade back to 30 degrees and cut a little mouth into what'll become my vertical partition pieces. Once everything was dry, I put a roundover bit in my router and went over pretty much every edge that I could get to, just to get rid of any sharp corners that might hurt kid hands. I knew that I wanted some sort of paint scheme on this guy, but I wasn't really sure what. At first I thought about making it look like a little mid-century modern house, but then as I was thinking, I remembered the color scheme of this road bike that my dad had when I was a little kid in the 80s, a Peugeot. And I always liked the way that that bike looked, so I decided to use that for my inspiration. So this is one of those pieces that'll probably keep evolving. I've got three blank walls where I can hang other things, and I could definitely get more intricate with how things are organized on the inside. But even as is, I think it's a lot nicer than what we had before, which was nothing. And it should take the task of getting my garage camera ready down from about three minutes and a messy driveway to one minute and a semi-respectable driveway. Hey Siri, make a note. What do you want it to say? If I ever start an indie band, consider the name Semi-Respectable Driveway. Okay, I created a note. Thanks, Siri. And thank you for watching, liking, subscribing, and all that other good stuff. Alright, see you in the next one.